Okay, so any so any questions so far? In efficiency one, efficiency two that we have seen. Right? Um, any questions at all that you might have? Or any phrase that needs to be explained? Um, anything that is still not clear? Any questions? Just feel free to ask, right? Or you can post it on the chat as well. Right? Okay. Um, yeah, so the beauty of this, um, you know, in efficiency what two, what we see is that, you know, all these riches, all these, uh, or all these changes, wonderful changes that have been brought, you know, for humanity, right? It's not just for, you know, one person, two persons, it's for the entire world. It's for the entire world that, uh, you know, a, a person's uh, spirit, which is dead in trespasses and sins is made alive. That a person who is, you know, living according to the uh, sinful nature, uh, according to the way of the world, uh, led according to the, you know, the, the powers, the prince of the power of the air, whose end is destruction. Right, so that is something that we see that uh, that Satan does not have good plans, right, for the people and the way he manipulates and forces and challenges, uh, uh, intimidates people to live, is is just for people's destruction, right? So, uh, like the whole world feels trapped, unable to come out of certain things, certain certain patterns, lifestyle patterns, certain addictions, and so on. Well, Christ has actually made a way he has set people free he has um, made alive quickened spiritually but the thing is all this comes into reality in a person's life the minute that person gets saved right so that's the thing so it is already done so just because it's already done on the cross one cannot assume that okay you know, now the whole world is saved. No, because that is another, you know, that's another heresy, you know, that is uh, in the world, which is uh, in some circles, it's, they just say, okay, the, Jesus has done this and, and that's it. You know, it's automatic. It's done. Uh, I'm saved. It's done. No matter what, no matter what I'm doing, I'm, this is, I'm, this is, Christ has already done. There's nothing no more powerful than that. So it's already done. It's already, you know, I'm already, saved etc but the thing is this you know what we see in verse 8 is very important okay so that is what we are going to look at now verse 8 is very important see all this is done for us for entire humanity okay it's all this is done for entire humanity but how does that come uh, into force or how is it how does it um, come become a reality in our lives it is when we read verse 8, we get the understanding. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Okay. So it talks about the grace of God, something that is freely given, something that is not earned. Right. Uh, it's uh, uh, un something that we do not deserve. So for, for by grace we have been we have been saved. Um, just one second. I'm just seeing if it's, um, yeah. So we have been saved through faith. Okay. So it's grace by grace. This work is done by grace. It is extended to us. We do not have to do anything, but how do I have access to it? How do I receive it? It is through faith. So, which means that I come and I believe, yes, this is what Jesus did for me. And I receive his, uh, gift of salvation. So the minute I receive him, I, the minute I receive this into my life, into receive him into my life, receive the gift of salvation, then everything changes. Then this becomes a reality. This spiritual truth becomes a reality in my life, right? In the life of any person who uh, becomes saved through faith. Okay. So it is very clear. It says it is by grace that. Um, it is through faith and it's not of yourselves you know it is a gift of god it's a free thing that has been given 
it's not your your work it's not a work, work of the self right and verse 9 yeah it's not of works lest anyone should boast right because if it's a work there is always a ten tendency to boast why because you can say okay this is how i did it this is how i planned for it and this is how i executed it and this is how long i worked at it and and because of my continuous effort uh, now i am saved right because of my continuous effort because of the hours that i spend doing this and the other and now now i'm saved well no one can boast it is not a works lest anyone should boast right so everything that we have received is by grace but it's through faith yes the one thing that you that was required of us or required of you and i is to believe in what he has already done believe that it's a free gift believe that you know it's a it's a gift of grace and receive it by faith that's it right so the thing is beautiful thing is that it's it's by faith so it's anyone can have access to it uh, no matter you know what background it is from what education what financial background you know what uh, uh, you know education or even lack of education riches lack of riches uh, whatever social standing nothing everything is made equal because it is by faith you know, every person can actually believe and every person can you know believe in this understand this believe in this so it has been made totally impartial okay otherwise we would say okay you know i i need to have this training i need to have um this kind of a thing a position in life and and then you know i can be saved you know, which is what someone says right uh, you need to be born in a certain certain caste you need to be born in a certain way and then you will have you know you have access to god and if you're you know born in a certain other caste then you don't have the rights or the privileges of you know another caste you don't have the rights or privileges you have you are only you know this but that is not so here it is through faith so when you access these riches or this this is what he has made us he has made us to sit with him in the heavenly places it's for everyone right it is by grace through faith which means that if i come to him in faith it is for me my past everything you know, that doesn't matter right or my privileges position all that doesn't matter my education my lack of it all that my training everything doesn't matter right it is through faith so praise god right we have uh, such a wonderful uh, you know wonderful salvation and wonderful way in which he made it available for the entire world right not a works lest anyone should boast verse 10 verse 10 uh, we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god be prepared beforehand that we should walk in them so it says okay it's not a works but the fact is you are a work of god you know he's saying it's not your work that you receive salvation but i want to tell you something that we are his workmanship okay so we are his workmanship and the word used there is poema okay which uh, literally means um, you know something that has been you know that is a work of art you know something like a like a painting or a picture or a sculpture or some fabric that is woven you know some material that has been made woven and it's a beautiful thing so it says that we are his workmanship his work of art and how we are made as work of art created in christ jesus right? in christ jesus we've been created and we've been created for something okay and what is that something that we've been created or oh, we are created for good works okay we are created we are first of all we are his work of art and we are created in Christ Jesus and we are created for good works and, uh, and, uh, and the word work means you know it's like uh, uh, any an, an act or a deed or or, a, or even a business and you know some some work something that is doing some that you do uh, some labor that you do so we have been created for good 
works like good labor good things that we can do uh, with our lives right? we've been created uh, for good works and this is the beautiful thing right the last part of verse 10 it says which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them so which means these good works god has already prepared for each of us that right? he's already prepared for each of us so what remains is that uh, we need to be led by him we need to seek him pursue him led by him to discover these good works what is what is the good works that he's showing us what are the good works that he's asking us to you know walk in and go do that right? he's prepared beforehand that we should walk in them his desire is that this good works that he has prepared he wants us to walk in them okay not to neglect them so for us we just need to find out you know live in communion with him live in fellowship with the holy spirit be led by the holy spirit every day every moment be led by the holy spirit into the good works that he has already prepared beforehand and we are led into the good works and you know when we seek god and we ask him lord i i i want to know your will i want to know your plans and purposes you know we do it with the intention of wanting to do the good works that is prepared what is the thing in seeking god and god shows okay this is my plan this is my will i want you to do this and then we we hold back from doing it right now this is the will of god the last part of that verse verse 10 says that we should walk in them he wants us to walk in these good works he has prepared these good works he has created these good works uh, which he has already prepared beforehand in Christ Jesus that you and i should walk in them right we should we should walk in their meaning we should discover it we should complete it and he is with us holy spirit is with us to empower us with his resurrection power that we may know that supernatural works you know all that just flows completely you know flows in and through us right okay verse 11 therefore remember that you um yeah verse 11 to 13 right therefore remember that you once gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called circumcision made in the flesh by hands that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without god in the world but now in Christ you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ okay so is is reminding us you know you were this is how you were that you were once gentiles in the flesh um called uncircumcision by what is called circumcision again by the jews this is how you were called you were you were gentiles you were non jewish people you were uncircumcised by called as uncircumcised by those who are circumcised and and you had you know you were without christ <clears throat> you were alienated from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenants of promise so you had nothing to do with israel you had nothing to do with the uh, with the covenant we had nothing to do with the promises of god and uh, you did not have any hope and uh, you were without god in this world right you were without this uh, you know without this uh, true god living god you did not have anything to do with him no connection at all right but now <clears throat> in christ jesus you who were far off have been brought near okay so is an alienated meaning we are you are distanced excuse me so you, know, you were distanced you were totally far far away uh you had now no connection at all you were not even close right um <clears throat> but now you have been brought near how by the blood of jesus by the blood of christ in christ jesus you were who were once far off you know now you have been brought near now you have become god's covenant people right you have become god's covenant people because through the blood of jesus okay verses 14 and 15 goes on to explain how okay for he himself is our peace 
who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, okay, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Okay. And he came and pre preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So he's talking about Jews. He's talking about non-Jews. He's talking about the ones who are circumcised and uncircumcised. And he's saying that, you know, you were without Christ, but now by the blood of Jesus, you are brought near. And Jesus himself is our peace. Okay. Jesus himself, the Lord Jesus himself is our peace. And um, in the word that he uses there is Irene, right? which means uh, uh, which means quietness and rest and uh, you know uh, <clears throat> there is uh, no have no confusion right um, so he himself is a peace it also means safety security and so on right harmony so saying he the lord jesus is our peace okay and he is broken so he has made both one in the sense this circumcised uncircumcised Right, people who were Jewish, people who were non-Jewish, now both have been made as one. Okay, how? What did he do? Verse fifteen, uh, verse fourteen itself. He says that he has broken down the middle wall of separation. What was separating the Jews from the non-Jews, the circumcised from the uncircumcised? That what was separating was taken away. Okay, he has abolished. How did? What did he do? It. What did he do? Um, abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments. Now, this law was, uh, was of course, given to the Jews, right? uh, and they were living by it. And this law, which contained the ordinances, which was, you know, in uh, which was separating the Jews from the non-Jews. Right? So the Jews could say, you know, we have the law; we are the people of the law. We have the law, we have what is required, and we need to keep it in order to be made righteous by God. Now, the non-Jews did not have it, so that was that was like a wall of separation, right? The enmity between the two. And so he said, he says that uh, in his flesh he abolished it. That is in his body he abolished it. How? On the cross. Right? So he created one new man that is a new creation. Whether you're a Jew or a non-Jew, now both have been made one, right? So when they get saved through faith in Christ, now Paul himself was a Jewish person. Now he's the efficient church were non-Jewish Gentiles. But both have uh, one uh, access to God and both were saved by grace through faith okay so that is what he's saying he's saying that uh, uh, so as to create in himself one new man okay so you can need you cannot say now I'm a Jewish person I have the law uh, or you know you the non-Jewish person need not say that you know I'm separate I'm uh, or I'm distanced from the law I, I'm separated from God. I know, you know, even if he knows that he is the living God, uh, you know, I have no access to him. You know, a person who, uh, a non-Jewish person cannot say that because Christ has created one new man from the two, thus making peace, right? Ephesians 2.16, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. So what did he do? He reconciled both of them, like both the Jews uh, and the non-Jews, he reconciled okay, to bring them back, to bring them back to a place where probably, uh, you know, um, they fell from, to bring them back to a, back to a place, to um, a, a state of 
uh, harmony and goodness, right? a place of harmony and goodness, he's reconciling them back both to God, whether you're Jew, non-Jew, he's reconciled because of the cross, because of his death on the cross. Now, because his death on the cross is for everyone, the Jew and the non-Jew. So that both the Jew and the non-Jew, therefore, need to be reconciled to God. Right? So we see that salvation is does not come, the righteousness does not come from the law, but comes through faith in Jesus. Right? So he's saying he's reconciling them both to God in one body through the cross, therefore putting to death the enmity. That is whatever was separating the middle wall of separation, everything has been has been removed, right? Has been has been moved out of the way, has been destroyed. Verse 17, and he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So he came and he preached peace. You were far further away, who were close. You know, for everyone, he uh, uh, preached the message of peace, the message of second, message of reconciliation, right? being reconciled to God, being you know, uh, being coming back to God, right, and not being alienated from Him, not being separate from Him, because earlier He says, right, that you you were dead in your trespasses, in your sins. That's how the verse the chapter starts, right? You were dead in trespasses and sins. Um, you were walking according to the prince of the power of the uh, world, and you were by nature children of wrath. You know, internally, this is what you wanted to do by nature. Uh, you know, your your internal, um, uh, everything about you was to do sinful things. But now you've come to Christ. And now what he says uh, is that you both, Jew, both of us, we, that is the, uh, Jew and non-Jew, Jew and the Gentile, circumcised, uncircumcised, we have, we both have access, meaning we both can enter into the presence of God. Uh, we both can uh, access God. We can go closer to God. We can commune with God by one Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. And uh, and He has also, you know, mentioned that earlier, right? In chapter one, we see that um, you know, in whom you also trusted, chapter one, verse thirteen, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Right. So he's again reminding them, you know, that both of us have access by this Holy Spirit to the Father, by one Spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, verse nineteen, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens. Okay, you're no, no longer a stranger, you're no longer a foreigner, but you are a fellow citizen, which means equal rights, equal privileges. You are a fellow citizen of the kingdom of God. Right? Fellow citizens with all the saints and members of the household of God. So fellow citizens with the saints. A saint is a consecrated one. So here also, you know, he's talking about the fact that we are all one, you know, a saint is not a title which is uh, given. Uh, it's not a special privilege given to anyone. We are all saints in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, right? So we are all saints. Um, so fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, okay, the family of God. We are all in the family of God and we are all members of the uh, household of God. So we see different pictures about uh, about the church as well, that we are the body of Christ, right? We are the uh, household of God. We are the family of God, okay? And uh, this family of God, he talks about the church. Now, fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, verse 20 onwards, right? Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the, the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building 
fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Okay. So he's saying you're no longer strangers, no longer foreigners, fellow citizens, but you are fellow citizens. Fellow a citizen, when we say a citizen, a citizen is uh, a part of a, a country. You know, and you say you're a citizen of India or you're a citizen of any country. You're saying that, hey, I'm part of this um, country. I have the rights and privileges of every citizen in the country, the constitution, you know, which what which um, uh, which applies to me. Uh, I there's no bias, in respect to of who I am, rich or poor. I'm a citizen, and the rights of the citizen, the rights and privileges, responsibilities of the citizen are applicable to me. Okay, so he's saying that you are no longer strangers or foreigners. You know, then you're not a citizen. Then certain rights and privileges are not there. Right for a for example, a citizen. You know, just when you look at a natural example, a citizen, one a person who's not a citizen cannot vote. Right, a, a person who's not a citizen cannot um, be part of the government. Can't get a government job, or you can't serve in the government. Right, because why you're not, you're not a citizen. So certain rights, certain privileges are not there. If you are not a citizen of of some country, right? So here he says that you are no longer a non-citizen, but you are a fellow citizen, like just like me, you are a citizen, and uh, with the saints and members of the household of God. So you are citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. You are you are a member of the family. Uh, you are a member of the family. Uh, consider yourself to be a member of the family uh, of the household of God. Uh, that this household of God is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Okay, so uh, to God used these uh, the apostolic ministry. God used the prophetic ministry in order to lay the foundation for the for the early church, uh, and so. It has been built on this foundation, right? And who is the chief cornerstone? It is Jesus, right? And we are being built up on this foundation and with Jesus as the cornerstone. Uh, this whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple to the Lord uh, or in the Lord, right? So we see another picture. So we saw the picture of the member of the body of Christ. We see the household, the family of God being the church. And then here we see that it's a, it's a building, right? It's a whole building being fitted together and growing. And, and it says grows into a temple. Now it's a building. It's now, you know, it's, it's growing into a temple in the Lord. In whom you are, you also are being built together in Christ. Um, you are being built together in the Lord. You're being built together, built together with a purpose. Right? You're built together to be a dwelling place of the uh, of God in the spirit. Right? So, which means that we we carry as a church, as a, as the body of Christ, the the Spirit of God dwells in us. Right? We are built together for a purpose, that He might dwell in us, that He might direct us, that He might enrich, empower our lives together as a body. Right? So that's why you know there's so much importance about unity. Right? When there's unity, when there's one accord, when there's oneness of uh, you know mind and spirit and the spirit, spirit of God moves in amazing ways because he he wants that unity in the body of Christ. Right? So, so we see that. Right? So we have access, and we are being built. Um, uh, we are being built to a, as a whole building. We are being built as a holy temple, and uh, we are uh, a household. Right? We are fellow citizens. So all these. <clears throat> are our privilege as children of God. So you see 
you know so many so many descriptions of the believer so many descriptions of the people of god like family and citizens and building and the holy temple and we see all this listed here okay. and then um and then we move on to chapter three okay, let's go on to chapter three um okay so in chapter three he goes on to say okay for this reason okay let's read the first few verses for this reason i paul the prisoner of christ jesus for you gentiles if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god that was given to me for you how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as i briefly as i have briefly written already by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it now has been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets that the gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in christ through the gospel of which i became a minister according to the gift of grace given to me by the effective working of his power okay so paul now says uh, he turns his attention turns his focus and and he says okay you know we see chapter 1 and chapter 2 you know we've i you know i've written all the riches of what is there for the believer i've seen what the believer you know i've mentioned what the believer will become in christ i mentioned all that okay for this reason <clears throat> i paul the the prisoner of christ for you gentiles okay he refers he sees himself as a prisoner of the lord jesus and um, and of course uh, one thing that we also see is that um, you know he literally he's uh, he was in a prison that right? we call these the prison uh, epistles because he was uh, you know he was uh, in rome in prison uh, when he when he um, you know wrote some of these epistles ephesians and then philippi uh, philippians uh, and so on so he says here that um, you know he, he's a prisoner of christ right um prisoner of christ for you gentiles if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which is given to me for you okay so he's talking about grace so it's good for us to um remind ourselves about the grace of god right when he says what is the grace of god which is because especially he says this grace of god that was given to me for you okay okay the first thing we we it's a reminder we have studied this so many times um so what is this grace is also divine favor okay so that's the understanding i think all of us have that it's a, it's something that we do not merit okay it's undeserving it's a divine favor okay undeserving something that we do not merit something that we do not deserve so it's given freely right divine favor second one we see is that it's also divine character okay um this is god's character divine character and he calls us to walk in and grow in this character okay let's look at a few uh, verses to which talk about that john chapter 1 verse 14 right john 1 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth okay this glory was full of grace and truth so we see that the glory of god who god is what he does right it's uh, it's referring to his nature his character which is full of grace okay what became flesh we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth okay the, the another verse which uh, explains that to second peter 3 um second peter 3 and verse 18 but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ to him 
be glory both now and forever amen grow in the grace guys asking you know peter is exhorting the believer to grow in the grace to grow up to not stay in the same place uh, in the grace of god to grow in the grace how do i grow in it because it's it's divine character right it's the glory of god which is revealed through his grace so it is divine character who god is so as believers we are called to grow daily grow in the grace of god and grow in this character of god which is christ likeness right the third thing we see is that um, is also a divine empowerment grace is also divine empowerment okay second corinthians 12 and verse 9 okay um turn to second corinthians um 12 9 right okay it says um okay concerning this thing i 12 8 i pleaded with the lord three times that it might depart from me and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness my grace is sufficient so it it, it talks about god empowering all saying this is more than sufficient for you uh sufficient to endure sufficient to overcome you know so he's saying uh, uh the second part of that was therefore most gladly i will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me so what is the grace of god saying the grace of god being the power of christ um my grace is sufficient for my strength is made perfect in weakness so the lord is saying my grace my strength uh, and the power of christ okay so it is divine empowering as well and the fourth part is uh, fourth aspect of grace is that it's a divine gift or free gift the word charis and which we see in uh, Romans 12, 6, or 1 Corinthians 12, 4. You know, we won't get into it because uh, you know, we've studied it so many times. The gifts of the Spirit and the, and the membership gifts of the body of Christ and so on. So um, charisma, right? Charis, charisma, it's a free gift, right? So when we um, uh, understand the grace of God, we see that God extends this, God gives this, uh this entire thing right you know when when you talk about grace we're talking about something that we do not deserve we're talking about his character we're talking about his power we're also talking about you know the gifts of the spirit and so on right so um so god gives us this so paul is saying that um when we uh you know look at it says if, if you indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which was given to me for you okay dispensation meaning stewardship or you know at this administration of the grace of god which was given to me and for your purpose so this grace of god is given to us so that we might steward this well right we might administer it to others now, grace of god it could be the empowering it could be the christ likeness and it's for others so paul is saying this grace of which was given to me um this presentation of the grace of God which is given to me for you. So the same would apply for us as believers, as disciples, that you would give us the grace for you know others to, a, to for that to be impacting others, for that to bless others. Okay. So uh, so that is the uh, grace of God, he says, and and he and he goes on to explain how that by revelation he made known to me verse 3 the mystery as i've already briefly written i written already by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ okay so as paul being the one of the founding members of the church you know he was not part of the 12 apostles right uh, whom we refer to as apostles of the lamb um, whom the lord called out and but but we definitely, you know, the Lord used Paul to write two thirds of the scripture of the New Testament. 
and uh, to lay the foundation, the foundational doc doctrines and so on, and also by divine revelation, he made known to Paul the mystery. Okay, the mystery which was, uh, you know, the mystery of the cross, the mystery of grace, the mystery of, uh, you know, uh, how one one has al salvation by faith and uh, through faith, sorry, uh, by grace through faith and and all this, where which Paul very faithfully he it was revealed to him and he very faithfully stewarded that grace by writing to people by teaching by by traveling by ministering so he this is how he stewarded the grace of god which is upon his life right by laying up foundation there um so whatever the lord revealed these these were foundational truths which was uh, you know paul says verse 5 um, in other ages, it was not made known to the sons of men. You know, it was virtually unknown in the other ages, uh, in the previous dispensation, like before the cross. But now, it has been revealed to not only to Paul, but to his holy uh, apostles, spirit by the Holy Spirit to his apostles and prophets, right? And and the, and one major revelation that right, which God spoke to. Uh, Peter and uh, you know God used uh, even um, Philip, right? The Ethiopian eunuch and so on. So we see that uh, this whole thing of the Gentiles being fellow heirs with the Jews, fellow heirs with Christ through this gospel. Okay, so so this is something that has been. Um, made known so it was it was not the only thing but it was it was part of all the other mysteries that were revealed you know about the cross and so on this was also one other thing that um, that the jews and the non-jews are made fellow heirs so there's no one who is who's got the upper hand or who's those you know who's got the lower hand whatever uh, we're all we're all of the same body we're all people of the covenant and we have salvation we receive salvation uh, by grace through faith right so this is the um, this is the salvation which is uh, which is there which has been made known uh, which god worked out uh, in the fullness of time right now this understanding was not there for the new testament saints like new testament believe a new testament i'm sorry for the old testament saints like people in the old testament in the old dispensation uh, they do not have this understanding but now by the spirit of god um the the early church you know to the early church it was revealed and to the people following that so um so this is what he says you know um Verse 7, okay, Paul says, um, so verse 6, the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body, partakers of his promises in Christ through the gospel. So we, we become partakers, we become partners, or we become people who receive, who have access to this promise, and who can, you know, who, have, who can partake of this promise in Christ because of the gospel okay now that's uh, so that's another thing that we are partakers of as fellow as joint heirs with christ okay verse 7 of which i became a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given to me by the effective working of his power and then paul goes on to say to me verse 8 who am less than the least of all the saints this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Okay, so, so amazing things that are uh, mentioned here. So he says, uh, uh, okay, that he became a minister according to the gift of grace, right, given to him by the effective working of his power. Okay, so, so for us to understand, you know, what is the gift of grace? What is the grace, uh, the gift of grace that he has given us? What is it gift um, or the divine empowering uh, or the charisma, uh, you know, which is the, the gifts of the spirit and the gift of grace? What is that gift of grace that he's given us? Now, that's an indicator. Uh, that is an indicator because when we are something that is to be noted, because when our life becomes aligned to that, or or we should say that you know our lives should be aligned to that, because that is where the power of God is poured out. Right? So he said, he says, I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. So the working of his Holy Spirit power was happening uh, and it was um, in line with the gift of grace that he had received by the Holy Spirit and because of which he was a minister. So as a minister, um, and having received the gifts of, uh, the, uh, the gifts of grace, uh, he experienced the working of his power through his life uh, uh, in the gifts of grace, right? So he's saying, I became a minister according to that. I became a servant. I became one who would serve others uh, according to this, according to the gift of grace and the effective working of his power given to me by the working of his power. So that's a, that's a signpost. That's an indicator of the areas in which God wants you to work. God wants us to work in, right? So that points to us. Okay. Um, and then we see, to me, who am least, less than least of the saints, he says, you know, I'm less than least of the saints because he says this because he persecuted the church, right? Uh, and he says, uh, I don't consider myself to be any, a superior saint uh, or superior to anyone, right? Uh, in another place, like he says, you know, all the learning and everything is nothing. Like all his training in Judaism, uh, it's it's all nothing. When he say, when he, he says that in Philippians, right? Philippians three. So he says to to you know to me who am the least of the saints, uh, this grace was given. What is what was it given for? This favor, you know, this something that we did not deserve. This empowering, uh, this character and divine character. And the gifts of this boy was given so that he should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Right? So uh, Paul walked with humility. He recognized the work of God's grace in his life. He says, you know, this is all because of the grace of God. And it was given to me so that I might preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. Um, you know, unsearchable meaning it's, you know, it, it just cannot one 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 thing is you cannot find it on your own you need the work of the holy spirit the other thing is it's it's limitless right it's just inexhaustible unending because god is infinite there's no uh, there's no end to what he will continue to reveal you know, the riches of christ the unsearchable riches of christ okay so we'll stop here as we're, we're at verse 8 and um, and then we will uh, continue in the next class. Right. Okay. Um, sorry, one second. Okay. So, see you. Take care. God bless. Bye bye.